No, but I will. I think it's live. G'day guys, um, my name's Alex from The Tripod, and welcome to another episode of Punting 101. Um, you would not believe this, obviously, I think you've probably heard on the pod um, that I did lose my phone over the weekend. I've had an absolute debacle again here. I've done pretty much the whole Punting 101 um, pod, and it did not record at all. So let's have another crack here. Um, this week we'll go over staking. Last week we did uh, cashing out and why you should never do it. Um, first things first, um, make sure you join our group. A lot of great stuff in there. There is a link in the description to this video. Um, and another really exciting thing we've got going on this week, um, just for this weekend, uh, we've partnered up with Sport Champs just for this weekend um, for an NRL punting comp. Um, essentially how it works is it's only 20 bucks entry, all that money goes into a pot, um, no rake off the top, so it's all going straight into the pot. Uh, we've got a, over 100 people in there at the moment, so over $2,000 in prize money. Um, and if you finish in the top 25%, you will get a cash prize. Um, essentially how it works is you put 200 bucks, oh, sorry, you put 20 bucks in there, that's all you'll need to pay for the whole weekend. Um, you have to put a minimum of five bets on for the NRL weekend. Can be anything, can be fucking head to head, can be line bets, margin bets, first try score, anytime try score, anything like that. Um, and, if you, and if you win the most money out of your starting account, so you put 20 bucks in, you actually get $10,000 of fake money. If you win the most out of that 10 grand in fake money, you will win the comp. And I'm pretty sure the winner will get something like over a thousand bucks or whatever. But if you finish top 25%, you will win some money. Uh, so if you want to join that one, it's going to be a bit of fun. Kicks off tonight, obviously, for the first game. You can join it late, but I would suggest joining it today so you can punt on the Melbourne Rabbits game uh, that's happening in about an hour or so. Um, there's a link in the description to this video as well. Let's get into it, guys. Um, staking. So a lot of people ask me about this all the time. Um, how much should I put on any one of my bets? Should I put 10, 10 bucks on, 20 bucks on, 50 bucks on? Um, and it all depends. And, and I'll tell you what, what it all depends on. Um, first things first, um, let's go over bankroll. Now, people have all sorts of different definitions for this, but I, I really do truly believe that our um, definition that I'm going to go through with you today and our staking system is the most simple and the most effective. Um, now, bankroll. Some people say that's the total amount of money you're willing to lose in your life betting. I don't think that's a great way to go about it. You don't know what's going to happen in a couple of years' time. I like to probably say one year. How much money are you willing to lose punting it over the next year? Some people like to do it for a season. Let's say you're punting on the NRL um, and you say to yourself, I'm willing to lose 5,000 bucks punting in the NRL at the absolute maximum uh, this season. Um, I like to do it as a year just because there are all sorts of different sports seasons into, you know, you get the NRL season crossing over to the NFL season now. Um, but basically, that is the maximum amount of money that you are willing to lose punting in one single calendar year. Um, whether it be a hundred bucks, whether it be a thousand bucks or ten grand, it doesn't matter. But what it does matter for is how much you're going to be putting on each bet. So that's where we get to units and unit size and unit stakes and that kind of thing. Um, now, some people, I've heard all sorts of absolute garbage where people say one unit is two and a half percent of your bankroll. Um, and all this kind of weird shit, but it's like that makes it way too difficult. Just keep it simple. 1% of your bankroll is one unit. Two units is 2% of your bankroll. That's the easiest way to do it, and that's the way that we've found is the best. We do suggest two to three units per bet, um, and we, we, we suggest this because, and I'll, go, I'll get over this um, when we get to the Kelly criterion in a little bit, but we've done this for four years, we have a winning clip of 60%. We know that we have an edge over the bookies. So when you have an edge and you know you have an edge over the bookies, you should bet more units. Um, that's why we suggest two to three units of play, uh, but never more than 5% in one game. Sometimes we give out five, 10 plays on a game that we really love, but if you're throwing three units on every single one of those plays, you could be down 30% of your entire bankroll in one game. So let's say you know, we have five plays on a game, I would suggest maybe pick and choosing, you know, two of them, put two units on each of them, um, or, or lowering your unit size if you're going to bet multiple bets on one single game, but never more than 5% on 
of your bankroll on one single game. So if your bankroll is 100 bucks, you're gonna bet five bucks at the absolute maximum on one game. Um, what I like to do as well, and what I do tell people to do, um, is reassess your bankroll monthly. So maybe you just set an alarm that on the first, first of every month, you go into your punting accounts, you see what your balance is, and you can reassess your stake size from there. Um, look, it's, a lot of people do it on an Excel spreadsheet. Some people use um, you know, a fucking notebook to keep their records in. I would suggest you just get the Tripod app, T-R-Y-P-O-D. That will track all your units for you. It'll tell you what your ROI is, and you can just adjust your bankroll from there. So let's say you start, you've got 10 grand as your bankroll, you win two grand, that means you're up to $12,000. So now you need to adjust your stake size. And I would say, you know, so instead of one unit being 100 bucks, one unit has now become $120. That's the best way to do it. Some people say you should do that shit every day. I don't agree, it takes too much time. Just do it once a month on the first of every month and it's not gonna stress you out too much. It's gonna take you, you know, 15 minutes to do that. Uh, and then you've got your stakes all set up for the next month. Um, I would get into Kelly Criterion. It is a good way of, of figuring out your staking size and that kind of thing. But look, if you do want any more info on the Kelly Criterion, maybe just shoot me a message, shoot a page a message, or just hop in the Tripod group, um, and we can explain it a bit further there. But it, it, it is a complicated formula um, for some people, but at its very bare minimum, at its simplest, essentially what it means is you calculate the edge that you think you have over the bookie, uh, with every bet you make and the more edge you think you have the more you bet and it makes sense Obviously, you know if you're a 60% punter You should be betting more on every bet than if you're a 50% punter and losing half your bets And you should not be betting that much um, And similarly with the Kelly criterion the more edge you think you have over the bookie for a certain bet The more you should be placing on it. It does get a little bit tricky You have to plug in a formula every single time. So that's why I just say um you know, we probably think most of our bets on the NRL have a similar chance of winning. So I just say two to three units on each bet, reassess your bankroll monthly and your unit sizes monthly, and you're gonna be fine with that. Um, one staking method I will get into is the Martingale system. If you've been in our group long enough, you know guys like John Tran absolutely love the, the Martingale system, the John Tran casino method. Um, you can't lose, blah, blah, blah. For, you, for those of you that don't know what the Martingale system is, um, essentially what it is is you put a unit on a bet or one dollar or whatever. If it loses, then you put double on. If it loses again, you put double on. You just keep doubling your stake until you finally do win and you essentially win one unit. Um, I hate this um, and I'll, I'll tell you exactly why. Um, people say, oh, it's going to be so hard to lose 10 bets in a row. You're never going to lose 10 bets in a row. People do this, you know, with sports betting. People do this with, um, you know, roulette at the casino. Um, and I'll tell you why it's bad. Not firstly, because you're changing your unit sizes for no particular reason at all, except for the reason that you're down. So you could have a bet, your first bet, that you absolutely love, right? You think it's got a great chance of winning. You put one unit on it, it loses. Um, then you put two units on the next one. So really, you should think that that next bet is a better bet than the first one, but not necessarily because you're just doubling your money to get it back. And so then by the end of it, you're fucking putting 32 units on a bet that you probably don't even think has a better chance of winning than the first one. So that's why it is bad. But there is multiple more reasons. Look, it's not that hard to fucking do your entire bankroll um, in, in a short amount of time by using this method. So, <clears throat> I did a couple of examples here. So let's say you have your entire bankroll, right? That you have for the whole season of punting. And you're, you're doing two unit bets, right? All you need to lose your entire bankroll and some is six losses in a row. Six losses in a row. We have had that many times before. I guarantee you guys have had six losses in a row. It's not that hard. Over a sample size of 100 bets, you guys will put 100 bets on in a year. There's no doubt about it. We give out about 40 bets a week. So we put, we're putting on hundreds of bets. Or you guys may be putting on hundreds of bets a year. But this is just a sample size. Of if you're putting 100 bets on, you have a 55% chance of losing your entire bankroll. 
It doesn't seem that good when you look at it like that. And you might say, well, what if I reduce my unit sizes to one unit as my first bet and then keep doubling? Well, then you only need seven losses and that's a 32% chance that you lose your entire bankroll in just 100 bets. So if you happen to get through those 100 bets, in the next 100 bets, you've got 32% chance of doing your entire bankroll as well. Eventually, you will lose all your money. Don't do it. Um, that's pretty much all I think I had to say. Just down the bottom I have here real quickly, don't increase your unit stakes when you're down. Like I mentioned up here, two to three units per bet, and that is working off your bankroll. Um, so actually, people say, should I increase my stakes when I'm down to try and chase my losses? You should actually do the opposite. So if, you're, if your bankroll has gone from $1,000 to $500, you should actually decrease your unit sizes and bet less. Um, I know it's hard for a lot of you guys to do because um, you think, fuck, I'm down, I've got to chase my losses. But over the long term, that will be much better for you and you won't lose all your money and have to fucking give up hunting. Um, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions at all, um, feel free to message the page, Punters Pod, or hop in our group. There's a link uh, in the description to this video as well. And yeah, make sure you join the comp. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. There's a little trash talk section in there as well. There's a bit of banter going on already. And yeah, the prize pool is up over two grand. Um, so that'll do it for this week, guys. Uh, hopefully I'll be back next Friday, same time around five o'clock with another segment of Punting 101. See you then.